Hello everyone, welcome to Ignite, where we connect, grow, and inspire. As you prepare to listen to the sermon today, I pray that you are blessed. Let's get started. Praise the Lord. Now one of, um, one of the ten top personalities in the Bible is Apostle Paul. And um, if you take out, I mean, sometimes I, I choose not to classify Jesus in the, in the league of heroes because Jesus is the hero maker, okay? And, and so when you take Jesus out of the, of the equation, when you talk about David, and one of my most passionate character in the Bible is Apostle Paul. Um, not only because he's a, he's a type A personality like myself, you know, the type A personality, aggressive, want to get things done, you know, lack patience, yeah, that's the story of my life. You have your own story, amen? That's who Apostle Paul is. Yeah, but you see, the, the, the beautiful thing about Apostle Paul's story is that it's humbling when you listen to how God took him from being a terrorist to an evangelist. It, it, it's humbling for you to know and look at your life and say, how bad can I be? And let me tell you something about my, my um, salvation story. Every time I hear people give their salvation story, I feel a little bit of I feel a little bit of intimidation. You know, I feel it because my salvation story is very boring. How many of you have boring salvation stories? Mine is very boring. I actually moved from a good boy to a god boy. You know, there was I've, I've heard people talk about when they, when some people give their salvation story, it's thrilling to me. It's, it's, it's inspiring to me. Oh, I used to I used to be crazy. I used to do weird things bad stuff, and Jesus met me and transformed my life. I feel intimidated because I'm unable to say the same thing. I was just, you know, a party boy. I tried not to do any harm. I was too scared to get into trouble, you know, and so, and, and that humbles me a lot when I see some unbelievable transformation in the life of others. You know, all I did growing up was just even when I didn't know God, I was bent on following my father's rules, okay? I, wasn't re- my, I was reading my father's Bible then. So, thou shalt not do this. Once my dad says it, that settles it. You know, I will hang out with friends, go to parties when friends are doing crazy things, I step aside and I try to be careful, you know? Let me quickly give you, um, just from, from the scripture, let me quickly run you through some little insight about Apostle Paul. Um, we, let's call this session Meet Apostle Paul. Amen. He was born in Tarsus, modern day Turkey, to a wealthy family, so he wasn't a, he wasn't a poor guy. Um, well educated and bilingual. He was, he was a Roman citizen by birth and a Jewish true parent. He was from a Jewish parent. He sent, sent, to, sent to learn from Gameli in Palestine at the age of 13. I be, he became a lawyer and a member of the Jewish Supreme Court. That's Apostle Paul. He was well learned. Um, first of all, intellectually, he was one of the few people that connected to me because I, I had a little bit of intellectual pride. Like so many of us here, when, when, when I was trying to take a decision with following the Lord, I just felt that a lot of Christians that I was seeing around me, they didn't strike me as being intelligent. I just thought that they, they were... I mean, there was so much more I don't like in them than the Jesus that I should be liking in them. Amen. How many of you know somebody like that? You know, so it was a problem for me. But follow me um, as we get to know Apostle Paul a little bit more. But Apostle Paul was a lawyer. So he was a learned fellow. A family business was tent making. Their family, like I said, he was from a wealthy home. And he continued in that path as an entrepreneur, even preaching. Um... He was so much into religious violence and intolerance, persecuted Christians. He was a religious terrorist who supervised the death of Stephen. How many of us know about the death of Stephen? Yeah, that was Apostle Paul was the mastermind, the, the first true follower of Christ that was murdered just by, because of their faith. Stephen was that person, and Apostle Paul supervised that killing. Opened the Christianity to be accessible around the world. If not for Apostle Paul, you will probably not be sitting here. Um, not so much as Apostle Paul being the one who initiated the concept of the church or how the church will expand, but Christ had to use Apostle Paul to take the church beyond the Jewish community. 
Before now, it was just assumed that Jesus was the Jesus of the Jewish people. God was God of Jewish. I mean, Jesus is a prophet. That's it. But Apostle Paul was one of the, 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 the vessels that God used in taking the gospel around the world that we all enjoy today. He's indeed a hero. One of the most famous Jewish personalities in history, like I said, he wrote 13 of the 27 books of the, first, um, of the New Testament. He was a great traveler for the gospel who was often flogged out of one city to another. And when I was, when I was putting down, down, down my notes um, about that aspect of Apostle Paul, I, I just imagine Apostle Paul having a teenage daughter. How many of you know that teenagers, the greatest fear of a teenager is their parents embarrassing them? How many of you know that? I once told a parent, I, once, when I was having a conversation with some parents, I said, your children, they fear embarrassment. You know, when you are a parent and you, you, you lash at your kids in front of other children, of, of their peers, you kill something inside of them that you can't even imagine. I learned that a long time ago, even before my kids got into teenage level, you know? So I would just imagine that if Apostle Paul had teenagers and he says, guys, we are going to um, we are going to Jerusalem tomorrow. I can imagine how they will respond again. <laughs> that they just flogged you out of that place yesterday. You were naked. They were beating you and were crying. Why are you going back there? That was who Apostle Paul was. Apostle Paul was relentless in his pursuit. That was some of the things that made him a class heart for the Lord. But if we were to sit down in the class of Apostle Paul, because every one of us here, we are heroes. Even if you don't know that you are, that's how Jesus sees you. You know what he called you? He said you are the light and the salt to the head. That's, that's be, that's, you are like a savior to the world. If Jesus is going to do anything in this world, in this generation, if Jesus is going to make difference in the life of people, he's going to do it through you. So you are the hero he's looking for. Now, everybody wants to be a doctor, go to med school, and um, somebody wants to be an engineer, will go, you know, go study engineering in the school. And um, even, if you want to le- even if you want to be a driver, you go to driving school, isn't that? But how many of us ever think that there's a, there's a school for heroes, a school where people get developed to maximize their potential for the Lord? And this was one of the things that inspired us to, to decide on this teaching that how, how about we have the Heroes Academy as a series that ignites? Because we are called for that. You are better than you look. You are better than what you are manifesting now. The world is yet to see the best of you. And so if we come to our, if we come back and begin to see that, okay, why don't we learn? And that's the big idea of this entire series that we've been studying. That because I'm a, I'm, I'm a hero, I know that God has called me for that. But am I saving the world? Am I performing for Jesus? Am I functioning for Jesus? No, I'm not. I'm not doing enough. How can I get to do more? I want to sit at the feet of those that God has set aside as heroes and given us their literature in the Bible for us to study about them. And I want them to talk to me. That's the big idea about this teaching. And so if we we were to sit down in the class of Apostle Paul, what will he be telling us? I'd like us to look at Acts verse 22. Acts 22, chapter 22, verse 1 to 5. It says, brothers and, brothers and esteemed fathers, Paul said, when he was trying to address the headers, listen to me as I offer my defense. When they heard him speaking in their own language, the silence was even, even greater. Then Paul said, I'm a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, Cilicia, and I was brought up and educated here in Jerusalem under Gamaliel. As a student, I was carefully trained in our Jewish law and custom, and I became very zealous to honor God in everything I did, just like all of you today. This was Paul telling, you know, then that, look, I'm doing whatever I'm doing for a cause. I'm doing it for a reason. Now, the beautiful thing about knowing uh, Apostle Paul is that even when Apostle Paul was bad and doing the worst thing that is, that is unimaginable, he felt he was doing the right thing. 
The first thing that Apostle Paul is going to tell us, if we sit down in his class, is the fact that God can save anybody. God can save anybody. See, let me tell you, if when people look at you, you are always incompetent to save God from people's analysis. Either, you, either because you are too sinful or because you do not have enough skills. But when God looks at you, God sees potentials, God sees possibilities. Every one of us here can be used by God. God can save anybody, irrespective of how your sin is. Let me, let me tell you how, uh, how this was presented in Isaiah 1.18. It said, come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like, like grimsome, but what? They shall be like wool. God is giving you an invitation. Jesus is initiating a relationship and telling you that, look, this relationship is open. The criteria is the same. If you believe, if you are willing, that is all that it takes. You know, this is not a relationship where your, your resume has to be evaluated and Jesus has to look at, okay, oh my God, you have done so much killing, I don't think I can deal with you. This is not a relationship where Jesus is going to evaluate you and say, oh my God, I can't even count your lies. This is a relationship that is open for everyone. So Apostle Paul is going to tell you to, to, to stop condemning yourself. Stop feeling incompetent. Stop feeling that you are not good enough. Stop feeling that the, the big deal is the pastor. The pastor is the big deal. Oh, those ministers in church, if they're the only ones that God can use. That's not true. The only reason why I'm standing here and not you is because I yielded and I accepted to be used. Some of the best sermon that God wants to preach to people you might be the ones carrying it inside of you, but you are sitting down because you feel incompetent. You feel that the Lord cannot use you. You think you, think you have been too sinful to be used by God. Apostle Paul will tell you no. That you are a hero. And all you need is to repent and surrender to him. Repentance is the most powerful tool or leverage that we have as Christians. You know, it was repentance that separated Judas from Peter. How many of you know that they both sinned? Peter denied Christ. I'm sure some of you here, you will feel emotionally bruised if your friends, those you call your best friends, begin to deny you. You know, sometimes you have to picture and just have a, an imagination of, you know, being denied. And so, and, and, and Peter repented. That's so what I'm talking about him today. But pride set in the way of Judas. Pride. That's why God loves humility and he encourages you to be humble and he rejects the proud. God can use anybody. I want you to tell your neighbor that even you that might be the best news that they're going to hear for the week. God can use you. You are a hero. Amen. So Apostle Paul is going to sit down. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15.10. If Apostle Paul is going to sit down, he says, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without result. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I, but God, who was walking through me by his grace. If you are humble, God can stir you up to become the kind of hero you can never imagine. He can use anybody. Can you just sit down and imagine the dialogue in heaven when Jesus wanted to use Apostle Paul? Can you just imagine the silence among the angels, when the angels would have heard, yeah, we're going to use, we're going to use Saul. Um, we got to get the gospel over. I don't, I'm not saying that that's how Jesus talks, okay? If Jesus says, oh, we're going to get the gospel outside. We're gonna, you know, they, they, I didn't come to die for Jerusalem. I, 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 I didn't come to 
offer myself as a sacrifice for a small city. I've come, I came to save the world. And the commission that I gave my disciples when I was living is that they should go into the world. So if Jesus was saying in heaven that I'm going to send Saul, I'm going to send Saul, we're going to, Saul is going to be the one to do the job. I'm sure there would have been sudden silence in heaven. The angels would have said, Saul, are you sure? He's been killing your people. How will you send somebody who's been killing Christians? But Jesus knew that there is something greater in Saul than who the world sees him to be. So it's the same case with you. You have an unbelievable attributes inside of you, potentials. Now your current situations and conditions says otherwise. Your situation now says that, oh my God, I'm too broke to be used by God. I'm too unintelligent to be used by God. Your circumstances now says that, oh, my life is just a mess right now. I can't be used by God. How would God even consider using me? You're sitting down there, you are saying that, oh, what, what in the world will God be thinking? There are better people. Oh, why can't God? God can reach out to some better brothers or better sisters that, that go to fellowship every day, that are, that, are, that are prayer warriors. Why will he use me? But G Jesus was sitting down in heaven and saying, that guy who is killing everyone that I love is going to be a hero. Amen. So, I just want you to have that in your mind. Amen. Apostle Paul will tell you anyone can become used by God. Anyone. How many of you are taking notes here? Okay, so, in the class of Apostle Paul, what would be the first thing that he would say to you? Can anybody remember that? God can save anybody. He can save anybody. And just because Jesus, the biggest agenda of Jesus was to save the world, including sinners, including the people you can't stand. How many of you have some sinners you can't stand here? This is Sunday. You don't want to lie. You are too bitter. You're just angry. You, they, they irritate you. How many of you have people like that in your life? Jesus died for them too. Jesus wants to save them as well. Amen. <clears throat> so anyone can be used by God. He can use anybody. Repentance is the powerful, is powerful and it flows from place of humility, like I said. Also, if Apostle Paul was to be here in the classroom and is teaching us how to become heroes for God, what will he tell us? Apostle Paul will say, God can use your passion to his glory. There are certain things now that you consider as you're passionate about. Apostle Paul was passionate about, about the Jewish law. He was a lawyer. He was upholding it with all his might. He was going about persecuting anybody who is talking against the laws of Moses. What's your passion? What is that thing that you are so fond of doing that you think that is just a passion? The truth about it is that your passion can be used in the wrong way. When God connects with your passion and he fix your heart, your passion will relate with your heart and determine your heart comes in life. Now, one of the things that I did so well, I was so good at it, <coughs> when I, before I gave my life, in, in, then <coughs> back in Africa, we call it, you, you guys call it high school, we call it secondary school. When I was in secondary school, in my final year, I was the social prefect of the school. Um, social prefect of the school means the man who organizes the parties, the debates, every social event in the school, that was my job. I was an organizer, that was all I was doing. I didn't love the Lord, I didn't know Jesus, but I was doing it so passionately, I was, I, I mean, for many years, I don't know about now, maybe they don't even know me anymore, but for many years, you know, people talked about things that I did when I was in secondary school as a social prefect. But I never in my wildest dream thought that coming into the kingdom, that attribute was valid or useful. But guess what? When I became born again, from the first church that I joined, everything about me is putting things together. You know, by default, pastors would just call me to organize, to, to, to help things, make things happen. 
um, before Ignite started, I used to lead the, the ministers, I mean, the, the, the ministers and workers um, as um, the head of work team in the entire Mount Zion um, church. And that was my job. And, you know, we did so many things. I remember one of the, somebody came to meet me. We used to have what we call Workers Olympic. You know, every year we do like games. We go to a, a dedicated park. We play games, you know, compete against each other. We used to have huge dinner party and all that. And somebody was asking me, how are you able to put these things together? Uh, don't you get burnt out, burnt out? Don't you get frustrated putting all this together? I said, before I came to church, this is all I was doing. So it wasn't, any, it wasn't a big deal to me. You know, just putting things together. And, and when it was time for the church to start the second service, and, you know, I was, my pastor spoke to me. My senior pastor said, look, we need to start this. I wasn't, it wasn't, it was just a matter of, are people ready for it? It wasn't going to be a problem for me. Because God was channeling the same passion, the same thing that I used to love to do, and bringing it back to the kingdom. That was what was happening to me. Praise the Lord. I remember one of my friends that, that called me um, a long time ago, like three or four years ago, and he said, and he said to me, he said, I hear you are a pastor now. And, and you know, he was my dormitory boy, and we used to be in boarding school together. He said, but you know what? I said, what? He said, I'm not surprised. I said, why? He said, even while, you were, in, while we were in the dormitory, you, you, you were always carrying people's life business on your head and teaching them how to live their life. You know, you're always advising people on how to do the right thing, how to do the, that. So when I heard you became a pastor, I, was, I just knew that. So wh what am I saying in essence? You know, there's just a passion inside of you. You might just be somebody who is very relational, who is very good at connecting with people. That might just be all that God needs in you to turn it into evangelism. You are connecting people in an evangelistic way. There might be something inside of you. You might just be somebody who has a burden for people. You, you are not born again, but when you see people hurt, your heart is moved. You feel like, you feel, you, I mean, you, 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 your heart drops when people hurt. You might be surprised when God brings you into the kingdom, you are the best for the care ministry. And you are one of those that people can go to their shoulders to cry. <clears throat> so God, when you are born again, your personality doesn't change. Hello. A lot of time, God channels your personality in the right way. How many of you know that there is nothing as miserable as living your life zealously and passionately on the wrong course. In leadership, in leadership and personal development, you know what we call that? Struggling so hard to climb the ladder. Struggling so hard to climb the ladder, only to get to the top of the ladder, to realize that the ladder is leaning on a wrong wall. That's one of the things that happens to a lot of us. We are passionate about the wrong stuff. Bring yourself before Jesus and he will direct your passion and your personality will be used appropriately for the things of the kingdom. You will fulfill purpose. That's what the Lord is looking for. So a lot, if you see a lot of people that are talkers, they, they like to talk. I mean, I've always loved to teach. Long before I gave my life to the Lord. So you see people that talk. Check them out when they give their life and they become born again. Most, most, most likely. That's the direction that the Lord will use them. Because the Lord will channel that passion and that personality to the right cause. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. How many of us are getting something today? Why are the heroes in the house? Just few? Praise the Lord. All right. Apostle Paul will tell us if we are to sit in his club that you can be sincerely wrong. You know, because what he, what he thought he was doing, persecuting Christians, was a cool thing. He was doing it for God. But he was wrong. So a lot of you can stand now and be in a place of a sinful compromise, and you are just excited, and you are, and you, and you, and you are so full of it, and no matter what they tell you, you believe in your heart that this is what the Lord wants me to do. This is what I'm doing. Because you really don't have a clue. You can be sincerely wrong. Like I said, uh, when I was speaking just now about personality, it's like you are zealously and passionately
climbing the ladder of life and just saying, oh, I'm just doing good now. How many of you know people that have done so well for themselves? Only to get to the end of their life, they realize that they fulfilled nothing in the purpose that God has called them. It's like you climb the ladder with so much passion and you get to the top of it and realize, ooh, ooh, the ladder is leaning on the wrong wall. I should have consulted with Jesus from the beginning and let him use me in the right path. Sometimes it's the prayers that most of us need to begin to pray. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. There's an interesting thing that Apostle Paul will tell you if you were to sit in his classroom. He will tell you that you can sometimes suffer abandonment and loneliness. A lot of us here, one of the reasons why we cannot part from our friends or, or even impact our friends for Jesus a lot of the reason why some of us here are undercover Christians is because of the fear of rejection. We are so scared that if my friends know that I'm a believer, what would they say? How would they handle it? Oh, I don't want to be around them so they won't think I'm judging them. And so they will reject me. They will abandon me. I remember one of our sisters here um, when she took one of the teachings and she said when she gave her life that a lot of her friends, you know, everybody was kind of, and it happens to every one of us. You know, I mean, early when I, like I said, I used to, I, I just think party was my scene. I used to go to party. I used to organize parties, not just go to party. I organized parties um, then. And so when, when I gave my life, every time I'm around my friends, they're like, oh, you don't worry. You, you have no, you don't understand what we are doing here. You know, all of a sudden, I was experiencing rejection. It's as if everybody just wants to isolate me and do their own thing. And I need to start looking for friends that are thinking like me. Apostle Paul will tell you that I was abandoned. Let's look at, let's quickly look at 2 Timothy 4, verse 16 to 18. Um, 2 Timothy 4, verse 16 to 18. Apostle Paul was abandoned. Say the first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. Abandonment, just me alone. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so that I might preach the good news in its entirety for all the Gentiles to hear. And he rescued me from certain death. Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely into the heavenly kingdom. All glory be to God forever. Now, now Apostle Paul didn't suffer abandonment. I want to give you, I want to, I want to let you know here. If you are sitting down here and you are beginning to think that friends have abandoned you, people have abandoned you. Now they didn't abandon you because you are not good. They abandoned you because they are not good. It's not, it's not your fault that they abandoned you. Oh, it's a shame on them. Oh, they, I wish they knew better. I mean, who will, have, who will abandon a hero like Apostle Paul if they could see what is yet to accomplish? So, being abandoned is not a function of whether you are good or not. Jesus was abandoned. Is Jesus good? So, don't stand there feeling rejected. A lot of people have rejected me because of my faith, because I refuse to go to club with them, because I refuse to go to anywhere that is going to pull me back to my sinful past, and because of that, they have abandoned me. They cut, they, they cut me out of the show. Rejoice. The only abandonment that we should never pray for is the abandonment of Jesus, who will never abandon us. Doesn't that just give you a relief in your heart? Jesus will never leave you. He didn't abandon Apostle Paul. He was in prison several times and brought out and saved. He won't abandon you. That should be your most important comfort in your heart. You can't count too much on friends. You know, when we teach, when I teach leadership, there's something I always tell people. It's common with leaders. See, a leader, and listen to me, get this, because you are all leaders and you need it. A leader must learn to be alone without being lonely. How many of you know that it's, that it's possible to be alone and not be lonely? See, I have too much company with myself a lot of time. That sometimes I have to consciously get out of my, of my own meeting with myself to connect with my family. If you lock me up in the room alone, I will, be having, I will be having fellowship with myself, with my vision, with my ideas. 
I'm ignited inside of me, thinking of what the Lord is about to do with me. I don't experience loneliness because I'm alone. That is the level of spirituality that you need to attain. Jesus had certain times that he had to pull himself aside to be alone, to be alone. Was Jesus lonely? No. Leaders can be alone and not be lonely. How many of you know that that's one of the attributes of an eagle? An eagle flies alone. He soars alone. Have you seen eagles like, so many, like the small birds? The small birds will be moving in, in group. They fly in group. The eagle fly alone. That's leadership sometimes. You got to feel comfortable with it. Because people will abandon you. It's a breaking news. You will be abandoned. But Jesus will never abandon you. Amen. Amen. And that's the good news for us today. Glory be to God. God's glory is most reflected through our weaknesses. Um, through our weaknesses, the glory of the Lord reflects. Now, one of the, one of the main messages that Apostle Paul will prove to us that whatever weakness you consider in your life can actually become a thing that draws God's glory upon your life. Even Apostle Paul, as much passionate as, as, as hungry for Jesus as he was, he had issues in his life that he prayed and prayed and prayed. So every time you pray and pray, there are certain things you pray and pray and pray and pray for in your life. And you're not seeing the result. And you're beginning to get depressed and say, is there anything that I've done wrong to God? Why is God not solving this problem? God wants to get glory out of your life through that weaknesses. His strength is revealed in your weakness. How many of you know that? Say amen to that. So I don't mind whatever it is. Honor God with your weakness, with your pain. Lord, I feel, I, 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 feel, I feel worthless in these areas of my life. I, 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 feel, I feel incompetent. But I just want to worship you all the same because in the midst of this, your name will be glorified. Do you know how David's life brought glory to God, one of our heroes? David was a baby. David was unqualified in any way to fight Goliath. But David turned that, that smallness, that inexperience, he turned out everything before God and said, if I will slaughter this giant today, it must be because of you. And his words were consistent with that. That my God will, will defeat you. So whatever the situation is in your life and you have analyzed everything that is available to you and you are telling yourself that I can't make it, I dare you to commit that before the Lord and say, God, because of you, I can't make this on my own, but because of you, Victory is sure for me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And the last point in the class of Paul. Come on, say last point. And Paul is going to tell you this so that you can get it up front. You know, there's this mentality that we used to have. Um, I thank God I didn't, um, I didn't really, really give in so much to it because um, I had good mentors. And that is, that's why it's good to have great mentors. I have great spiritual mentors when I came into, um, into the body, when I became born again. And my spiritual mentors will always answer questions because I was like a child. I would cry to them every minute and ask them questions. When I heard somebody who is powerful, serving the Lord, who is so spiritual, suddenly died prematurely, I would cry to my pastor, how can that happen? How can somebody be that faithful to, the, to God and God could not save her? And I had people that God has planted in my life. They will always sit me down and explain to me. Now, let me tell you something that Apostle Paul will tell you today if you are to sit in his class. He will tell you that persecution, trials, the challenges of life comes with a package of redemption. You can't take the good out of it. Every great hero, whether biblically or in the world, that you can think about how to sacrifice. Me and my son, my 14-year-old, we were talking about Martin Luther King yesterday as I was, you know, communicating with him prior to, you know, why, part of my preparation for my message. And, I, I, and, and we talked about Martin Luther King, and my son said, Martin Luther King couldn't even give his children a good fatherly love because he was so busy in the street trying to save the world. Heroes sacrifice. Heroes face persecution. What sacrifice are you giving? Some of you will have a little challenge. Maybe a job did not come through. You will say, God, I'm done. I've been serving you. Now I don't have a job. 
what is what is it that you are willing to go through for the gospel? Apostle Paul was flogged. He was imprisoned. He was chained. I mean, as of this morning, when I was doing my little short time retreat early this morning, I was still reading the book of Acts, and I was putting my hands on my head that this guy suffered, child. Ja. And the Lord continued to flash my mind. Jesus himself gave up something for you to be here today. Heroes go through sacrifice knowing that they have to give something up for them to go up. You got to make up your mind. Persecution will come. But you know what? Jesus has overcome for you. It is a beautiful thing. Let's rise on our feet. It's a beautiful thing. It's a good news of the gospel. That no matter how much, you got to be passionate enough to say, no matter how much, I love one, one, I love one of the gospel um, artists who said in the past that even if God should stop doing anything right now, that I'm behind on my payment for all that he has done. I can't even make it anymore. If you are to be paying for all that God has done in your life, including waking you up this morning, you are behind on your payment. Collection should be calling you by now. Jesus is awesome. Now, the beautiful thing about Jesus is the fact that it will make ordinary you meet you where you are and ask, add the extra to you and you become extraordinary. And you begin to manifest great things for him. All because you yielded the ordinary you to his hands. And I just want to challenge anyone here, if you have not given your life to the Lord, Jesus is the hero maker. Every one of the heroes we've been talking about from the beginning of our teaching, only one person makes hero. When I watch Marvel movies, all these hero, um, you know, super Marvel movies and all the superheroes that we watch on TV, when I watch, most of the time, I usually notice something. There is just one, there is one guy behind the scene who is like the one that the hero goes to when they have problem with their powers. You know, it's like, I don't know, maybe it's the one that fine tunes them or something. Just this guy stays in one control room. I mean, I don't know if most of you have noticed that as well. A lot of time, I used to love Superman when I was growing up. That was my best, Superman. I don't know if I still have any other one, even more than Superman. I know there are so many. But every time Superman is weak and something happens, um, they have where he goes to and, you know, he will be told what to do. Even the movies, of James, the James Bond movies too, James Bond will always have somebody he goes back to that will give directive on what to happen. Jesus is the one who makes heroes, guys. That's where I'm going. And until you learn to yield to his leadership, it's impossible to manifest at your full potentials. So I dare everybody here today, if you have not given your life to Jesus, this is where you start from. You need to yield yourself to him. Let him make ordinary in you become extraordinary. Because if you can count your, if you can, if you can let your life, I mean, if you can count on Jesus or on God with your life, he will make your life count. I just want us to to have a talk with ourselves as we live today. And I want you to tell yourself as many times as possible, I'm a hero. That's what I am. God has called me to be the, the light and the salt to the earth. I am performing below my potentials right now because I'm doing it all by myself. I need Jesus to use me. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful. We love you. We thank you, Jesus, because you are the hero maker. We thank you because even coming out of your academy, we are lifted in our spirit because we know that you will do something great in our lives. We thank you because we know that if we can count on you, you will make our life count. We thank you for every assignment that you have laid ahead for us. And for those of us that are coming into this relationship that you have initiated already, we are responding to your call. Father, receive our heart as first-timers into the kingdom. 
And let us begin to grow from this point, precious Lord. Father, we give you all the glory. We we'll worship you, Jesus. In the Father's most excellent name, we pray. Thank you for watching our Ignite Sermon. Be sure to share this video with friends and family. Check us out on our social media for more information about our church. Be blessed.